Hi, LG here from LG Films, and today I have a camera review here. And as you can see, it's the Black Magic Cinema Camera. This has been announced like last April, and I'm here with the Black Magic Cinema Camera to show you how it, how it works out in the field and how it really performs in the industry and if it's the, really the right camera for you. I'd like to thank um, Media Village for lending me out this camera and I'm honored to have this camera with me to review and share my opinions with you. They gave me a package which includes a camera and a cage and a electronic viewfinder from Alphatron and also a battery and all this package kit which they do rent out so check it out Media Village and thanks for lending out to me for this review. Uh, this camera is great, has been a success and I think a lot of customers are ordering this uh, to have them on their own because it's really affordable, um, it's great, it shoots raw, 2.5K, who doesn't want that? Leaves me with a question in mind, which is where does this camera really fit in? Um, it shoots raw, so does it have to fit in with the red market or the Alexa? But the price is affordable, so do you think it has to fit in with the DSLR market? Since it's raw, you need to have a budget for post to process the raw in 2.5K. So it just leaves me a lot of questions and where this camera fits in. Now, let's head out and ask these industry professionals and ask their opinions and how, how they think about this camera and where this camera really fit in. The review that I'm doing about this Blackmagic camera is a review about art, science, and the impact of filmmaking. About 10 years of digital filmmaking, we came up to the point that where everyone can go out and start shooting. Even this conversation we're having right now is historical in 10 years. It left me a question in mind where, is raw that necessary? Or is it the start of raw? So that made me confused and left me lots of questions where, where are we today? Where we are today is definitely not where we will be in the tomorrow, two years from now. It's changing very fast. And it's, it's nothing really that you can predict. Well, now you're probably watching this particular footage compressed. They're probably watching this on YouTube or Vimeo. There's a whole influx of shooting from high resolution cell phones. DSLRs. I think DSLRs play a big role in uh, video production. Um, oh, in the future, it's gonna change really fast. We're seeing like in Japan, it's already 4K projection, like also 4K television, I, I yeah, guess, yeah, yeah. in Japan. I think this is really a point in history that everyone will remember. The most important thing though, is to be able to adapt, to change. You know, workflows are never gonna be permanent anymore. Flexibility, speed, the way the speed your clients want it. It's gonna to come to a point where equipment doesn't matter. And we're at that point now in many fields. It's gonna be left is creativity, teamwork, all the essentials that you really needed at the beginning. So that's where we are. That means everybody gets to tell their own stories. The digital filmmaking has bred a new generation of filmmakers who have opportunities to free themselves from the policies of traditional movie making. Production and distribution methods and the convergence of global media networks mean there has never been more opportunities to produce and find an audience for quality filmmaking. You can mostly say everything shot on digital, weddings, events, corporates, even up to commercials. It may be a sad thing for some, but a lot of videographers are taking this technology as to their advantage created a niche in the market that can charge more than before. But not all digital shoots raw. There's a boundary between shooting compressed and raw, just like how we divided shooting film and digital. Now, that's where my review comes in to find out if raw is necessary in the world of digital filmmaking. Let's find out. Do you like personally shooting in raw? I think there's an advantage to it for controlled environments. Latitude that you have from RAW really, really helps a lot. I think RAW has its place in the production process mm -hmm. because it gives you a lot of leeway 
mm-hmm. um, adjusting in, in post production. When you can only work with what you have. If I wanted a shallow contrast, I couldn't get that if you shot it at a at full contrast, which usually comes with something that's not given to you in raw. Before it was a pain, so much a pain, but now it's so much easier. As a cinematographer, I have to ask, when is it gonna end? I shoot guerrilla style. I shoot run and gun. Like, uh, you know, um, very, very, very less time for setup, shoot right away, and then go to the next location, that sort of stuff. So raw would be not suitable for your usage? Yeah, because I shoot a lot of footage. Uh, it's, it's very helpful if you do stuff on green screen, chroma. Uh, keying out details is, is a simple job, especially for fine details like, like hair, mm-hmm. of which I don't have much of. <laughs> <laughs> People will argue that you want optimal resolution for anything and everything, especially projects that have special weight. With RAW, you have the ability to tweak all you want. You saved your latitude, it's great for post, for grading. You get a true large format image which can be projected in gargantuan scale, but we're shooting for a format which is 7 uh, for AB, right? It's TV. April 2012, NAB held in Las Vegas, Blackmagic came up with an idea of a RAW camera, and the first affordable camera that shoots RAW was created. What we've really done here is we've, we've been obviously hooked into camera for 10 years, and we've been moving more into acquisition with things like our, our HyperDeck line, uh, and this was really kind of a natural evolution. The camera being so affordable, and the feature it offered, it scared the market. First, it started with SLRs. That form factor really revolutionized the way people shoot. Black Magic's just taking it to an- another level by giving people in that form factor. Wow, that camera's cheap. Promised, or what it offered, it, it's really a game changer for me personally because of the price point. Before, um, we had to bring like two big bags with us because we brought two big cameras. But now, we, we, could just, uh, we could just go with uh, one backpack. And in one backpack, we have like three bodies and a couple of lenses. And that's for three people. How do we do this? Um, there's an internal battery within this camera. So I got to brief the camera of its features and brag about this little machine. Being there first time, they were all amazed of what it could do. Well, so was I. But most of all, it was very user-friendly of its simplicity to use this camera. So, that's just the features that I want to brief you out. And uh, yeah, raw, choose raw, that's the beauty of it. And it's only for 3,000 USD. That comes with Resolve and Ultrascope. The first thing that grabs my attention here is that the LCD, the LCD monitor at the back is huge. huge. So how do you find it? It's changing exposure overall. I guess, I guess it's kind of geared for controlled environments mm-hmm. because, well, if you change like the ISO, you need, you need to, to go to fast. the menu. Yeah. But like for events, you know, uh, sometimes things just happen.
so far using this Blackmagic camera, what pros and cons have you found using this camera? Crop factor is a con. I guess portability is a pro if I was just shooting with the body and a lens. Battery life is a con. Dynamic range is a pro. Price is a pro. There. Magic is just a sellout camera. I'd rather use this. It's much better. It shoots 1080p, Samsung, go Korea. You've experienced this camera for three hours, four hours, and we've shot some test footage together. And uh, what are the pros and cons, your opinion? So far, the flexibility, I, I really appreciated the flexibility that the RAW can deliver. It's just like the cost of production are, that requires uh, with this camera. Yes, that's the that's what bothers me. First thing is that this is the camera, right? right? Yeah, this yeah, this yeah. box here is the camera, mm -hmm. and I noticed that everything else is accessory. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess if I bought this camera, I would have to buy all the accessories sure. to make it workable. The form factor itself, without the bells and whistles of a frame, put in the cage, put in the um, everything else, because it's. It's hard to use this, this camera just on its own. It doesn't feel natural. You feel more comfortable using DSLRs? Yes. And you like it? Yes. But if you think DSLR can shoot raw without the hassle of having the big file size, would you go for it? Yes. So it's a matter of time and the space? Yes. Gotcha. They don't, they don't shoot raw though. Mm -hmm. So you'd rather go for Blackmagic than the 5Ds? Uh, definitely because it shoots raw, yes. It feels like holding an egg. <laughs> like holding a... A folder. A folder. It's a square folder. Square folder with a... <laughs> this is... Hi, Blackmagic camera. It reminds me of shooting video on an iPad. On its own, it's weird to use handheld. Right. Once it's set on a tripod, then it finds its home. Now, what we've decided to do is to test this camera's dynamic range. We've purposely shot this outdoor on a sunny day to see if it can hold up the details in the highlights. The lighting setup was simple, a bounce from reflectors to fill in the shadows. quick problem that frustrated me using this Blackmagic camera was that um, when I was doing some test footage I couldn't record any footage to the SSD. I thought the SSD was full so I went to the editing suite to check if the SSD was full but then it turns out that I had like more than 200 gigs that I can use within the SSD uh, but once I got the SSD out of the camera it was very hot. I believe it was overheating problem. I'm not quite sure if it's the camera or it's the SSD. I think, I believe the camera should be the one that telling us that the SSD is overheating or something like that. At least an, a warning so that we will know if the SSD is full or if the SSD is overheating. Is there an internal drive outside of this? this no. One? Just it's just this one. So if you run out 250 gig, you need to insert put another one. And the RAW takes a lot of space. I guess if solid state drives are super cheap, it could, <laughs> could work, yeah. but it's not. Uh, 
Uh, I was about to shoot a uh, to the direct sunlight against the trees to get some uh, lens flare shot, and I've noticed this really weird problem on this LCD screen. Uh, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a dead pixel or it's showing us that's uh, blown up in highlight. Because if it's zebra, it's supposed to show us as a stripe in the clipped highlights, but uh, shows us as black and I don't know what this problem is. Uh, is it in the sensor, in the lens, or is it just showing in the monitor? Or should I check it in the editing suite? Now it's exposing why it's three thousand dollars, no? <laughs> Rolling. Hola, I'm making a testimonial now. So far, I have used the Black Magic camera, and um, I don't know if this is recording audio or not. I don't know if this is recording audio or not. Okay. <laughs> mm, okay. So, what I did was I adjusted the um, the audio input. Which is about 98%. So I could uh, really hear the, Distortion. the, the, the pull. Yeah. It's really the compressed internal compressor of this thing. It's really pulling the, the, the silence mm. of this room. It's, it's, it's getting it, it's pulling. But the problem is. You can't meter it. I, I no meter. No? I, I don't see if I'm like going. itself I'm happy of what it pulls off like the sharpness and the details that this camera have it has the film look that I desire and a flat looking image for post-production It is a great camera, but as you can see, it could have been better off with a slow motion. So I had the biggest question in mind and the reason why I'm doing this interview is I had this confusion where, where does this camera fit in? Mm -hmm. Does it fit in with the personal camera market where like a DSLR where you can shoot your personal stuff or events? Or does it fit in with the higher budget in commercials where you have to be with the Alexas or Reds? So where does it really fit in? Is it commercials, corporates, weddings? Where does it fit in? I think that's a misconception because if it becomes, if it goes into the TVC market, it's also cheap. It'd probably be cheaper to rent that than to rent a C300 or to rent a Red or to rent, definitely to rent an Alexa. I would say it would be a good B camera. For commercial work, you know, like very controlled environments, you know, you need to light up the scene yourself. Mm -hmm. It works in that perspective because uh, you control everything. You'll see from the camera itself that it's got a really sleek and elegant uh, aluminum design. Uh, it's designed to be handheld, so it's not the typical shoulder mount type digital film camera that you might be used to. So it's designed for you to take more easily, more readily, into more locations. Exactly As said, this camera is designed to be handheld, though the look of it seems to be hard to hold. Well, let's see this in action if this camera can be used for handheld purposes. Um, I'm surprised that you are able to uh, still use the form factor of a DSLR. Get really low, get really high, not that heavy, still can go handheld. Uh, and you have creative angle to work around with this camera, which is great.
would you rather go for RAW or resolution? Canon just came up with a 4K Canon 1DC camera that shoots 4K, which is compressed. And now a lot of people are going smaller in form factor and bigger in resolution. And Blackmagic recently came out with a RAW camera. So RAW versus resolution. With that topic in mind, what do you say? 4K compressed versus RAW. 4K resolution, huh? It's, uh, it's kind of hard. Wait, let me see. Okay, I'd, I'd probably go for the 4K compressed. Just saying off the bat because uh, I'd probably be able to do something about it or learn something about it in post. Maybe uh, 4K. I'm, I'm a post guy, but mm -hmm. I learned from the masters that uh, if you can shoot it, just to shoot it nicely. Okay, because I do appreciate the raw. So as an artist, I think, uh, I think, I think I'd go for a raw. Uh, I would still go for the camera that can bring in the best lens on it, bring in the best light uh, at the best focus. You know? So, but you know, a 4K red, uh, still superior, but then it boils down to, to budget. We tried it in low light. I got to grade a low light um, clip that was a candle, a backlit. The girl was in silhouette with a candle in her hand. And I can still see her face. And the grain is tolerable, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, compared to other, other raw materials that mm -hmm. I've worked with where she has, you'd see the raw and you think she has no face, but when you lift it up, okay, it's there, but there's a lot of grain in that that you don't really want. You rode a horse and wore your armor proudly Let down my hair to make a way for you To climb into the sky and catch the cloud that I've been dreaming on Pulling petals at my window, I'll be Singing my song to the man on the moon And counting fireflies that dot the canvas of a starry night What more can I say? It's you who's made me this way I'm so wrapped up like a bow Wraps up the unknown Trapped in your heart I'm so, I'm wrapped up So wrapped up Twisted, tangled I'm so wrapped up in you Wrapped up in love 
talking about its price being $3,000 that comes in Resolve and Ultrascope, is it considerable? I think at $3,000, US it's a nice camera to have within your video production arsenal. Very an investment, actually. At the very least, it's a good second second unit camera. I'd like to think it's, it'll be very good for chroma key, since we do a lot of VFX. I'm not sold just because uh, my interest and my support or my advocacy for the camera would probably be depends or hangs on the on the balance as to whether it will see itself progress to another generation. As of now, I think I'd still go with uh, DSLRs. DSLRs. It adds on to your arsenal. I'm not saying it's the only camera for your arsenal. Mm -hmm. I think it's nice to have an array of cameras. Would you ever work with this camera again? Oh uh, yeah, I would actually want to use it for for chroma session. Oh yeah, if you lend me this camera, I'll, <laughs> I'll definitely use it. Of course, I love to. I haven't I haven't tried uh, using that while you know, like following some chicken <laughs> or some pigs or whatever. Because uh, I'd love to use that handheld. I I would love to try it again. Mm -hmm. You know, I would want to see it in a real uh, commercial workflow to see if um, it can meet the demands of the director and the agency. I want to see it up to those directors who really put a lot of grading in there. There are a few things I'd like for Blackmagic to add later on. Hopefully, maybe with a firmware upgrade or another cheap, cheaper release. Yeah, it, it fulfills maybe 80 to 85% of what production needs. It, it, it gave me a new perspective. And like, even just with a short time, a while ago with shooting with it, I'd give it a second shot, you know. I'd, I'd, want, I'd want to uh, try it out again. So pretty much, we've answered my questions. And after all, using this camera, I have a few things to say about it. First, being a raw camera, it gives us filmmakers the flexibility using this camera. 2.5K is just enough resolution and having the ability to choose compressed format is a big win. In other hands, SSD cards may not be as affordable but compared to years back then, the cards are getting cheaper. It is built solid and is easy to use. And not to mention, the sensor size. It may not be a full frame, but after my experience using this camera, I came to realize that all you need is just the right set of lenses. It is also decent in low light and stunning, stunning dynamic range. I was sold instantly when I saw the footages on my monitor. The details and sharpness of this camera just blew me away. Also, let's not forget it's only $3,000 which you know comes with Resolve and Ultrascope. The price is more than reasonable and barely an investment. Now, it's just a matter of their development. If I have to be honest, this camera haven't met my expectations. However, considering that it's their first generation, I'll let it pass through. Let's try to recall those 5D Mark II days. Well, look at now. I believe the future of this camera is on our hands. By giving them the support, and feedback would take them to another level. Who knows, it could be a simple firmware update or first full-frame raw camera. Will I buy this camera? Well, I don't know, since I love working different cameras for each project. But I will say this, it is worth every penny you will spend on this camera.